breaking news. Rapper Fetty Wap has been sentenced to six years behind bars. Federal prosecutors were seeking the minimum five years in prison. The Patterson, New Jersey native pled guilty in August to conspiracy to distribute and possess cocaine. He and several others were accused of driving to Long Island and buying cocaine by the kilogram and then reselling it in both New Jersey and New York in 2020. So again, he will be sentenced to six years. Fetty, Fetty, Fetty. Eight years ago, he was enjoying all his newfound success atop the pop charts, and now he may end up being atop behind bars. But seriously, what happened? Rapper, singer, and songwriter Willie Maxwell II was born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. He would become famous under his nickname, Fetty Wap. Fetty for confetti, as in paper dollars, Wap for his affinity for OG trap artist Gucci Mane, AKA Guwap. Fetty was raised by a truck driver father and secretary mother. Church was a major staple in his life where he attended regularly with his family. His grandfather was a bishop, his mother sang in the choir, his father played the keyboard, his brother played bass, and his uncle played the drums. Fetty got into playing the drums as well and became pretty good at it. So much so that his uncle began to let him play every Sunday. He attended Eastside High School before dropping out in the 10th grade. And if you're wondering, yes, that's the same school depicted in the 1989 film, Lean On Me, starring Morgan Freeman as Principal Joe Clark. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency and my word is law. There's only one boss in this place, and that's me. The HNIC. Are there any questions? The rough and tumble area he grew up in provided the perfect setting for Fetty to begin selling drugs. He told Billboard.com, I felt like I'd rather get money than an education. When I did have people to listen to, I didn't listen to them anyway. All we knew was drug dealing, getting ran down by the police, and how much we gonna smoke today. At one point, he was practically homeless, sleeping on friends' floors. It wasn't until 2013 that Fetty began to wrap his head around music being a viable career option for him. Initially starting off as a rapper, he later decided to start singing as well. Two years later, Fetty's career would explode with the release of his debut single, Trap Queen. It ultimately went on to be a top 10 hit, spent 25 consecutive weeks there, and peaked at number two. Everybody hate who we just call them fans though. In love with the money, I ain't never letting go. The song, included on his mixtape titled Up Next, had an initial online release in March 2014 before its official drop on a small independent label in April. It didn't gain major attention, however, until mid-November of that year. In the same month, Fetty secured a recording contract with 300 Entertainment. Trap Queen was then re-released that December and became one of the biggest rap anthems, ending up at the number four position on Billboard's year-end Hot 100 Singles of 2015. In November 2019, it went 10 times platinum, achieving diamond status. An obvious physical attribute that Fetty is known for is his missing left eye. After being born with congenital glaucoma in both eyes, doctors were unable to save the left one and instead fitted him with an ocular prosthesis before his first birthday. As a result, he endured a difficult childhood dealing with school bullies. In elementary school, he brawled regularly, once even throwing a desk at another kid. But he gradually became more comfortable with his disability and as an adolescent abruptly decided one day to remove his prosthetic eye because he, quote, didn't want to look like anybody else, end quote. Since he didn't lead with that story when Trap Queen took off, people started to speculate what happened. One rumor had him losing the eye to a bullet. Fetty though took it all in stride. He told USA Today, it helped build my following. People started getting interested and they fell in love with the music in the process of trying to figure out what had happened. Beside his right eye, Fetty has a tattoo of the number 1738. The number, a reference to the Remy Martin cognac, is also referenced in his debut hit. He also took a page from the brand while naming his New Jersey squad the Remy Boys. He explained to Vlad TV in 2015, 1738 is the finest liquor in the urban district. If you go to the liquor store and you get a bottle of 1738, it's going to be the most expensive Remy. And that's what we planned out to be. We the finest. We taste the best and everything. Fetty's self-titled debut album was released in September 2015. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and has since gone on to achieve double platinum status. Three other singles were released from the project, 
679 and My Way both made it into the top 10 on both the Hot 100 and R&B hip hop charts. The fourth single, again, became a top 40 pop hit. He received two nominations at the 58th Grammy Awards for Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song for Trap Queen. Just after the tremendous success of the hit, a string of personal and professional issues began to plague the rapper's life. In 2016, Fetty got into some trouble concerning the accompanying music video of his single, Wake Up. He went back to his alma mater, Eastside High School, to film the project. It features him walking through the halls of the school as he sings, Let's Get Wiz Khalifa High, while admiring a stripper dancing on a pole in a classroom. While no students participated in the taping, it landed the principal in hot water, and he was ultimately placed on administrative leave with pay pending an investigation as to how the video was allowed to be shot at the school. Later, Fetty spoke at a Patterson Board of Education meeting, apologizing to the city, the principal, and dozens of the principal's supporters. In a statement sent to Billboard, Fetty offered, If I disrespected anybody, I came today to apologize, but I also wanted to let people know that I'm a product of my environment. Also that year, Fetty was hit with a major lawsuit regarding Trap Queen. A Danish songwriter claimed he bought exclusive rights to the beat in 2014 from Tony Fad, who produced the song. More drama followed in 2017 when TMZ discovered that Love & Hip Hop reality star and on-again, off-again girlfriend Alexis Skye hit Fetty with an official cease and desist order, claiming that she had nothing to do with the leak of an intimate video featuring the two of them and that he was likely responsible for it. Then, Fetty was found guilty for defaming an ex-employee who was a former tour staffer. She alleged that he promised to pay her up to 10% of the money he made from his performances, and she ended up using her own money to cover tour expenses. He owed her about $242,000, and on top of that, falsely claimed she stole from him. He ended up owing her $1 million. In November, he was arrested after being pulled over on a Brooklyn highway. He was subsequently charged with drunk driving, reckless endangerment, aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle, illegally changing lanes, and drag racing. Two years after that, Fetty was arrested in Las Vegas after three hotel employees alleged that the rapper assaulted them. He apparently hit a parking attendant after getting involved in a verbal dispute and ultimately committed battery on two other employees. Unfortunately, that incident wasn't his only reported case of assault. Fetty was sued in 2020 for apparently assaulting a woman in his Los Angeles home the previous year. The woman claimed that Fetty had strangled and punched her totally unprovoked after consuming several alcoholic beverages, and it eventually escalated to him threatening to take her life. There are actually many more stories I could tell, but... Ain't nobody got time for that. In a 2016 interview with Interview Magazine, Fetty was quoted as saying, Nothing bothers me, bro. I don't have issues. I always tell my mom I don't have regular problems. I have problems like, what type of girl is going to say they're pregnant by me today? As of the filming of this video, Fetty is the father of six children with five women. In early 2018, it looked like Fetty was going to be celebrating the arrival of another bundle of joy with Alexis after she named him as the father of her daughter, Alaya. The following year, it was proven that he was not. You are not! <laughs> Fetty appeared on the third season of VH1's Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, which documented his strained relationship with Masika Kalisha, another baby mama. He also appeared on the ninth season of Love & Hip Hop New York, which documented his strained relationship with Alexis. In September 2019, Fetty privately married model Leandra K. Gonzalez. One year later, they officially divorced. Leandra, who was the one who filed, alleged in legal docs Fetty was a booze hound and abusive cheater. He denied all of the allegations. In July 2021, it was reported that Fetty's daughter Lauren had passed away at the age of four. While TMZ reported that her death certificate stated she died of complications of a congenital heart arrhythmia, her mother took to Instagram to slam the report. She stated that the autopsy hadn't come back as yet and accused the tabloid of stealing her daughter's death certificate and revealing the cause of death before anyone was ready. Fetty finally released his follow-up album titled The Butterfly Effect in October of that year, marking his return after releasing nearly a dozen mixtapes over the last six years. That same month, Fetty was indicted along with five others on a drug trafficking conspiracy charge. He pled not guilty and was released on a $500,000 bond one week later. 
The following year, he was put back in jail after violating the terms of his pretrial release. Prosecutors say he threatened to take the life of a man during a FaceTime call in 2021. After that incident, Fetty pled guilty to conspiracy to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine and faced a minimum of five years behind bars. On May 24, 2023, Fetty Wap was sentenced to six years in prison. His lawyer argued that he'd been supporting many relatives and children and that he had needed money to sustain them once the pandemic ended live entertainment. Prosecutors had pushed for a longer term, saying that Fetty used his fame to glamorize the drug trade while making millions from his music. One prosecutor in particular asked the judge to remember the collateral consequences of drug abuse and pointed out that many people suffered during the pandemic, but they didn't turn to peddling poison. The judge called the case one of the most difficult she's had to decide in 30 years on the bench, noting that Fetty overcame obstacles to achieve unbelievable fame only to throw it away. She noted his loving, supportive family, many of whom had written to her, and his relationship to his children, but said his crime was serious and his actions while out on bail raised serious questions. Fetty himself apologized to the communities and families of drug users he hurt.